Hello my Woo friends. This video is part of a short video series where I try to share my experiences with the Meteor 75 Pro with you as well as all my Whoop knowledge. I'll try to show you valuable tips and tricks that should help you with the Meteor 75 Pro Whoop as well as with other tiny Whoops. Check out the other videos on my channel to get the most out of my many years of Whoop race and RC flying experience. Let's get started. Wait a moment, a whole video on the topic of Eclipse? Well, yeah, I think these little suckers have annoyed me long enough that they deserve a video. And I think some of you, my Whoop friends, feel the same. That's why I'm now making an in-depth video about removing and installing tiny Whoop motor Eclipse. By now, I've found two good techniques that let me remove and install the large and small Eclipse relatively reliably. I'll show you these techniques in detail in this video. And after a lot of research, I finally know where you can buy these Eclipse on AliExpress. So far, I know of two sizes used on tiny Whoop motors. It took a bit of work to figure out the exact size. I had to sand down a motor shaft so I could measure the exact size with a caliper to measure the inner diameter of the groove on the motor shaft. Speaking of work, if you can benefit from this video and would like to support my work financially, you can now easily do so with a PayPal donation at www.co-fi.com slash butterfly FPV. Thanks for the support, my Whoop friends. Of course, I'm still happy to receive your comments. Now, back to the video. The larger Eclipse have an inner diameter of 1.2 millimeters and an outer diameter of 3.2 millimeters. The opening is 0.9 millimeters and the thickness is 0.3 millimeters. The smaller Eclipse have an inner diameter of 0.8 millimeters and an outer diameter of 2.0 millimeters. The opening is 0.62 millimeters and the thickness is 0.2 millimeters. You can find the links to the AliExpress sellers in the video description of this video. The best tool for removing the larger Eclipse has proven to be a scriber. This tool costs about $10 and is also useful for other tasks. Everyone should have a scriber in their workshop. I also tried using a sewing pin, but it was too soft and bent. I think with a very thick sewing needle it would probably work, but I didn't try that. I also tried using a pointed pair of tweezers, which worked after a few attempts, but the most convenient method is definitely with a scriber. When prying off the E-clip, it's important to place your fingertip very close to the E-clip so it can't fly off. If you keep touching the E-clip with your fingertip throughout the process, it won't shoot away. You can achieve the same effect with a piece of soft, kneadable material. Some call it blue tack. In German, it's called Hofpunkte. This soft, sticky material also helps prevent the E-clip from flying away. If your E-clip does disappear, there's a good chance it's stuck to the inside or outside magnets of the motor housing, or to your tweezers, or a screwdriver, if they're magnetized. Sometimes the E-clip even sticks to your finger without you noticing. You really have to work carefully and slowly to avoid losing the E-clip. At least now you know where to buy replacements if you do lose one. Even with this method, there's still a chance you might lose the E-clip. You can't completely eliminate the risk. For me, the loss rate with this method is about 20%, which I'm quite satisfied with. And thanks to the non-magnetic stainless steel E-clips, the loss rate will be even lower in the future since the stainless steel clips don't stick to magnetized tools. When installing the E-clip, you need to make sure to place it precisely in the groove of the motor shaft. Then you can press the E-clip onto the shaft with a pair of tweezers. It's important that the side of the tweezers where the E-clip is open is slightly higher so the tips of the E-clip can pass under the tweezers. Alternatively, you can split the process into two steps. First, press it in slightly, then lift one side of the tweezers a bit and press again. When the E-clip is correctly installed, it should rotate freely in the groove. I always check after installation to make sure it can spin freely in the shaft groove. 
Sometimes I also install the E-clip with large pliers. Somehow that works quite well too. I'm not exactly sure why, but I actually like installing the large E-clips with pliers. As I said though, it's also possible with tweezers. Now we come to the smaller E-clips, my whoop friends. These E-clips are really tiny and very frustrating for beginners, but I finally found these E-clips on AliExpress. You can find the links to the AliExpress sellers in the video description of this video. Having a few of these clips as spares makes working on your whoop much more relaxed. With this E-clip kit as a backup, it's not such a big deal if you lose one. I hope I'll eventually find these E-clips in a bulk pack on AliExpress. So far, I've only found this watchmaker's E-clip set. Please let me and the other pilots know in the comments of this video if you find this specific size of E-clip in a bulk pack on AliExpress or Banggood. If there's a watchmaker shop in your area, you could of course ask there as well. The advantage of this E-clip set is that it includes a plastic tweezer, which is non-magnetic. That's handy. However, the tweezer tends to twist if you press too hard or from the side, and then the E-clip shoots off, so be careful with that. Ideally, you'd want a high-quality plastic tweezer that is non-magnetic and non-static. To remove this small E-clip size, you need a little trick. First, you need to know that you have to push the stator down slightly to expose the groove in the motor shaft. At least, that's how it is with these Beta FPV 1102 22000 KV motors. And the most important trick for these tiny E-clips is a small piece of paper, ideally the sticky edge of a post-it note. You can wedge this small piece of paper into the groove on the motor shaft under the E-clip. It acts as a guide for the E-clip, making it much easier to remove and also to reinstall. To remove the E-clip, I use a needle. For these tiny E-clips, a needle is strong enough. With the fingernail of a finger from your non-dominant hand, you can try to push the E-clip as far out of the groove as possible. Unlike larger E-clips, you won't be able to see the small openings of the E-shape you'll have to feel for them with the needle tip. It's important that you insert the needle almost at a 90 degree angle above the E-clip into the groove so the needle tip can reach the tiny openings in the E-clip. Now with a slight upward movement of the needle, you can try to lever the E-clip out of the groove. The smaller E-clips are less likely to spring away during removal, thanks to the friction with the paper. However, if you want to be sure, it's best to also use a soft, sticky material like Blu-Tac to prevent the E-clip from flying off. Using your fingertip like you would with larger E-clips is almost impossible here because you have to start so deep down with the needle to reach the openings of the E-clip with the needle tip. Sometimes the E-clip will also be pulled in by the magnets of your motor. If your E-clip goes missing, always check your fingers first. It might be stuck there. Also check your tools, which might be magnetic, and the inside and outside of the motor bell. Sometimes it gets stuck in the gap between the bell and the stator. And sometimes, despite all your careful work, you just won't find that E-clip again. That's part of the game and probably can't be avoided 100%. But it's no big deal anymore. Because now you know where to buy replacement E-clips, thanks to my research. Speaking of research and the effort behind this video, if you found this video helpful and would like to support my work financially, you can now do so easily with a PayPal donation at www.kofi.com slash butterfly FPV. Thanks for the support, my Whoop friends. Now, back to the video. To install the small E-clip, you'll need to use a small piece of paper as a guide again, just like during removal. Carefully place the E-clip on the paper and slide it as far as possible into the groove of the motor shaft. This process is very tedious. The small E-clip sticks to everything, and sometimes the magnets of the motor bell pull it in. It's really a hassle. But with some patience and slow, careful movements, you can get the clip into the correct position. Once everything is aligned properly and the E-clip is wedged between the paper and the top edge of the groove, you can gently press it into the groove using tweezers. You can also place a free finger on the tweezers to cover the E-clip in case it flies off. That way, there's a better chance the magnets of the motor will catch it and you won't lose it completely. Finally, check if the E-clip can rotate freely in the groove. If it does, you're done, and your motor is ready to whoop again. In the coming months, there will be a few more videos about the Meteor 75 Pro. How you can modify it, how you can repair it, and so on. Stay tuned, my friends. And subscribe to the channel and set the notifications to on, so you don't miss a single video.
And last but not least, you can already find many videos of the Meteor 75 Pro on this channel in which I try to help you with this tiny book. Lots of tutorials, tuning tips, flight tips and repair videos. And there will be even more in the future if I am motivated enough by you, my friends. Stay tuned. Subscribe to this channel and activate the notification if you want to know when I publish a new video. And if you decide to buy a new Meteor 75 Pro or another Whoop from Beta FPV, please use the affiliate link in the video description. This motivates me to publish more high quality videos. A like or a comment from you also helps motivate me to produce new videos with educational content. In other words, you will probably have the most videos for this Whoop and the best support in the future if all goes well. I can't promise anything, but I'll do my best. The chances are good. I've also made many other posts with educational content in my YouTube community. It's worth checking out the posts. There are even a few tips I haven't made a video about it yet. So be sure to check them out. Maybe you can learn something from them that will make your whoop life a little easier. Happy flying my whoop friends.